Hey there, so today we have another Battle Beers and we're doing some macro lagers. So if you wanna skip ahead to the beer, Battle Beers part, please just skip ahead this part. I'm gonna be talking about the science -y stuff. So there's actually going to be some rhyme or reason science -y stuff behind the reason why I'm doing a Battle Beers between two of the biggest lagers in this country, uh, Budweiser and Coors Banquet. So I was actually listening to a podcast, uh, Good Beer Hunting, and a couple of the brewers of Avery were on and they're talking about this banana flavor that they're getting. Actually, while I'm talking, I'll mix these two up. I have them uh, uh, mixed up so I have them blind. And they were talking about one of the beers they drink. I mean, even though they're craft brewers, they enjoy a nice lager and uh, they drink a lot of Coors Banquet. And they're talking about this isoamyl acetate flavor that they're getting out of Coors, which is really interesting to me. If you don't already know, isoamyl acetate is that banana ester that you'll get in your Hefeweiss and some of your Belgian beers. So a banana flavor in a American macro lager. Really interesting. And then if I was going to do the Coors Banquet, I thought I'd uh, do it side by side with another macro uh, lager. And that's Budweiser. And Budweiser is actually one of the commercial examples that has a low amount of acetaldehyde. So one of the all flavors that I had to learn for uh, Cicero. And acetaldehyde is an inter uh, intermediary with the production of alcohol. And it's also an intermediary in the breaking down of alcohol. So in the brewing process, it's uh, part of the process to get alcohol. And then your body breaks down alcohol. And one of those uh, intermediaries is um, acetaldehyde. So when you actually smell someone's breath and they smell uh, boozy and you smell boozy sometimes, you're not really smelling alcohol actually. It's acetaldehyde. It's your body trying to break down alcohol and one of those compounds is acetaldehyde and that's the breath of uh, booze that we sort of smell. So you get a little bit of light green apple kind of thing from acetaldehyde and we get a little bit of banana kind of flavor from isoamyl acetate. So we'll see. I'm very curious if I can really pick between these two beers and find those differences. And also I just wanted to do side by side and see, hey, which one do I like more? So let's think of the first one. What is that? Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's bananas. That's bananas right there. I mean, I just never sit down to investigate and really think about macro lagers, but man, I just got a big waft of banana Hefeweizen. If you guys have had Hefeweizen or Belgian Vit beer, it's banana right there. That's so freaking obvious. That's crazy. Okay. I never thought of, oh, sorry. I'm swirling around. Uh, I never thought of that. But that's absolutely crazy. Yeah, that's banana right there. That has to be the cores. Okay, yeah, I sort of see it. It has a bud kind of flavor to it, but it's very low amount. So maybe I'm bad at acetaldehyde at detecting it, but it's got a distinctly different aroma. I'm mostly getting the graininess, but I'm really looking for that acetaldehyde. And the first waff I might've gotten it, maybe. It's sort of a, yeah, a sort of little bit of like a stale, like beer breath kind of thing. Let's dig into the first one. unmistakable <laughs> it's so weird like now just the first gulp and my, my, my nose is working and, and just that first sip and my nose just got hit banana again you know it's a light clean lager throughout nothing too much to say about it but and from what I understand by the way it's just from a little stress that they put the yeast under and then the yeast under some stress is going to cause more um, esters and phenols and then one of the expressions you get here is, is banana it's so obvious. As you drink it more, the graininess, the wateriness of the beer and the light, you know, lager thing is going to dominate. But if you really look for it, it's like, it's like barely, barely there. You know, I got it on the nose first, but now as my palate is acclimated to the beer, I'm just tasting the beer. It's really hard to find. Like I got it on that first sip and it's like gone now. It's like very hard to find. Very, very hard to find. It's just like a light grainy lager. You guys have had this beer before. I don't need to go on and talk about more tasting notes. Yeah, it's quite different. Hmm. Huh. This one's got a sweet thing up front. Again, I can't promise you that I'm tasting acetaldehyde. Um, Yeah, I guess just an off flavor that I'm not great at, and there's a low amount of it in Budweiser, so my, you know, the, the, my, my palate might not even have the threshold able to detect it in this beer. Which one do I prefer? This one feels like it has a little bit more of a full grainy malt body behind it. And then there's a weird metallic thing on the back end, which I don't really like. Eh.
they're both <laughs> like very similar. Uh, again, really training your palate to find the differences and nuances between macro lager is really where you can really expand your palate. So, um, I mean, again, I'm telling you, it's real hard to find the differences between these two beers. If you put two beers like this side by side to me, I'd have a hard time telling you, oh yeah, these are two different beers. I might just tell you that you're tricking me and just put two beers side by side. The same beer side by side. I don't know, this is a weird metallic thing. Maybe it's a um, acetaldehyde coming through. This one is a little bit more, it's slightly more, I guess, watery in my t sense. It's a little bit more crushable. It, it tastes less off, if that makes any sense. This one just tastes like macro lager. I mean, it's Budweiser, it's the macro lager, but uh, this one tastes more rounded, if that makes any sense. It's just more like beer, craft beer at least. Yeah, I don't know if that is. It's a weird grainy thing, a little bit metallic. I don't know. Anyway, so I will say I probably prefer the uh, Quarters Banquet, but not too much. And let's see if I actually was right. Yes, absolutely. So that's the uh, um, Coors and this is the Budweiser. Yep, absolutely right. Yeah, um, try it out, guys. Uh, you guys try to uh, grab some Bud and tell me if you taste this kind of like, uh, they describe it as green apple. It's got a little bit of like bruised apple thing going on. It's bright and green. Um, and ideally, yeah, I mean, I sort of smell it. It's more to, sort of smells like, you know, like, like beer breath. And then this one, there it is again. There you go. It's circus peanuts. It, it, it's, it's, it's fake banana runts. It's not like pure ripe, actual banana that we eat. And uh, yeah, surely a good amount of isolamyl acetate in there. It's quite noticeable and uh, really fun. So next time I go out, I'll probably order a Coors Banquet and just like savor the fact that I'm having a little bit of Belgian influence in my macro lager. Really interesting stuff. Until next time, guys, cheers. Let me know what you think. Tell me what your favorite macro lager is. Um, today, I guess, uh, tonight, I, I guess I prefer a little bit of that Coors Banquet and, and maybe in the future I might order Coors over uh, Budweiser. So until next time, let me know what you think. Later.